Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, as you can see, I'm not in the, the sanctuary. I, I am at home in my living room recording this. Uh, wherever you might be, whether you're sitting down with family in your living room, uh, whether you are uh, sharing this uh, at another time, uh, whether you're with us uh, this morning on a Sunday morning, uh, we give thanks and hope you feel a sense of God's presence uh, here. Uh, as things evolved in the week, we decided to, uh, to shift our thinking on the live service, wanting to take seriously the state of emergency that we find ourselves uh, in here in the City of London and no doubt many other communities across Canada and around the world. Uh, and so we're taking this uh, social distancing very seriously to ensure that the spread of COVID-19 uh, does not continue or that we flatten that curve to ensure that healthcare professionals are able to deal with the, the onslaught of those that are in need. And we lift up prayers today for all of those uh, people that are on our minds as well. So we're going to do things a little bit differently here. You'll hear a gift of, of music offered up by our two music directors, uh, Mark Smith and, and Betsy Exley. Uh, they had a chance to record a few songs uh, in the sanctuary, uh, practicing social distancing while doing so, and so we give thanks for their gift of song. Uh, a prayer today offered up by Marilyn Arthur, uh, and also uh, scripture read by Marilyn uh, as well. Uh, and so as we gather here together, I hope you, in the absence of sitting with others uh, today in our sanctuary, I hope you feel a sense of God's Spirit being with you, lifting you up, providing you help and hope in this time of need. One thing I will mention to you, we don't usually do this at the beginning of the service, but it's a critical time to do this. Uh, I know that we're not alone. Uh, there are many communities of faith across the country and around the world who are nervous right now. Uh, we don't have the opportunity to, to pass the, the plate as we typically do on a Sunday morning. And we know that we rely on the generous offering uh, that is provided by people who come and, and enjoy worship and uh, celebrate with us. Um, that work enables us to not only pay our staff and provide uh, uh, worship services that provide healing and wholeness for so many individuals, uh, but with our work, we're also able to reach out to those vulnerable people here in this side of uh, London and no doubt across the, the world with the work that we do here. And so I want to encourage you uh, now or at some point within the service uh, to take time uh, if you're comfortable with it. Uh, we have our Give Point uh, uh, kiosk at church, but you can access that Give Point uh, access site uh, to give to the church right now from home. Uh, I'm going to put the image up on the screen there, but it's just givepoint.com slash Riverside United Church. You can also go to uh, the website, our website, riverside.on.ca, and click on the Give Online button. Please do so. Uh, and if you can't give online, send in a check to, uh, to Riverside. Uh, drop off one at the church in the mailbox there. Whatever you can do, we want to ensure that this faith community is viable for many, many years to come so that people just like you and like so many others are blessed by the presence of God's love and the gift of community in faith. Thanks for gathering here, and let's gather in song.
scripture reading for today, as you find in the season of, of Lent, uh, they seem to get longer and longer and longer, the gospel passages. And, and today is certainly one of those days where we hear a lengthy passage from John chapter 9. Um, if you love the Irishman and thought it was too short, you'll really love this passage uh, of scripture. But uh, give thanks for Marilyn Arthur uh, reading this for us this morning. Uh, settle in and, uh, and, and listen for God's word as we hear this passage for the fourth week in the season of Lent. Our scripture reading comes from John chapter 9 verses 1 to 41. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned so that he was born blind, this man or his parents? Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents, This happened so that God's mighty works might be displayed in him. While it's daytime, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said this, he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and smeared the mud on the man's eyes. Jesus said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went away and washed. When he returned, he could see. The man's neighbor and those who used to see when he was a beggar said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? And some said, It is. And others said, No, it's someone who looks like him. But the man said, Yes, it's me. So they asked him, How are you now able to see? And he answered, The man they called Jesus made mud, smeared it on my eyes, and said, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. They asked, Where is this man? He replied, I don't know. Then they led the man who had been born blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus made the mud and smeared it on the man's eyes on the Sabbath day. So Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. And the man told him, He put mud on my eyes. I washed, and now I see. Some Pharisees said, This man isn't from God because he breaks the Sabbath law. Others said, How can a sinner do miraculous signs like these? So they were divided. Some of the Pharisees questioned the man who had been born blind again. What do you have to say about him since he healed your eyes? He replied, He's a prophet. The Jewish leaders didn't believe the man had been blind and received his sight until they called for his parents. The Jewish leaders asked him, Is this your son? Are you saying he was born blind? How can he now see? His parents answered, We know he is our son. We know he was born blind. But we don't know how he now sees. And we don't know who healed his eyes. Ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jewish authorities. This is because the Jewish authorities had already decided that whoever confessed Jesus to be the Christ would be expelled from the synagogue. That's why his parents said, 
He's old enough. Ask him. Therefore, they called a second time for the man who had been born blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. The man answered, I don't know whether he's a sinner. Here's what I do know. I was blind and now I see. They questioned him. What did he do to you? How did he heal your eyes? He replied, I already told you and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They insulted him. You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we don't know where this man is from. The man answered, this is incredible. You don't know where he is from, yet he healed my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. God listens to anyone who is devout and does God's will. No one has ever heard of a healing of the eyes of someone born blind. If this man wasn't from God, he couldn't do this. They responded, You were born completely in sin. How is it that you dare to teach us? Then they expelled him. Jesus heard they expelled the man born blind. Finding him, Jesus said, Do you believe in the human one? He answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. Jesus said, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. The man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus. Jesus said, I have come into the world to exercise judgment so that those who don't see can see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard what he said and asked, Surely we aren't blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you wouldn't have any sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. May the Spirit Bless us with wisdom as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. And let us pray. Creative God, source of all beauty, you give light to the soul. Open our hearts this day as we listen for your word. Open our minds as we dream with you. Reveal your life-giving truth that comforts and disturbs us. Through Jesus the Christ. Amen. But we all have our own healing stories. They may not be as miraculous as the ones that we read in Scripture, but I do remember one from when I was nine years old. My grandfather had come over to the house shortly after the end of the school day, and I don't remember all the details of that afternoon, why we were there alone, but I do remember that we were doing work in the kitchen that afternoon, uh, prepping for dinner that night. My job, my task that uh, afternoon, was cutting up the veggies while my grandfather prepared the other parts of the meal. I think you may know where this is going. Well, just moments before I finished my task, I took my eyes off my work for just a split second, and before my brain could catch up to the work of my hands, the damage had already been done. I don't think I screamed too loud when the knife hit my finger, but I did make enough noise that my granddad sprung into action. Uh, In the blink of an eye, he he grabbed me with one hand, uh, turned on the kitchen sink with the other hand, and maybe he had a third hand, because in what seemed like one motion, he, he pulled out a small bottle of his own personal remedy, turpentine. Twisted off the cap, poured a small amount in the pool of warm water, and then, in the same motion, thrust my hand into the basin. 
Now to this day, I, I can't remember whether my scream was louder when the knife hit my finger or when my hand hit that basin and plunged into the diluted pool of turpentine. Pretty sure it was the latter. I think that day, if I had the option, I would have rather had a quick mud bath and a visit to the pools of Siloam, but in the absence of that, I suppose turpentine was the second best option. It wasn't the second best option. Well, the reading from John chapter 9 is a long one, to say the least. You would think that the gospel writer would be able to tell a healing story like this in, in less than 41 verses, but I'm glad that he stays there and spends, let's be honest, an absurd amount of time writing about the back and forth between the religious authorities and, and those that are on the outside looking in. The healing itself only takes up really two verses in the passage. The rest of the reading touches on, on sin, blessing, concerns for what is clean, what is unclean, conflict over the law, and, and ultimately it deals with the question, how does God look upon humanity? How does God see difference? I think the most important words spoken in this passage as you might expect, they, they come from, from Jesus. The very beginning of the passage, Jesus and the disciples, they, they see the man who is visually impaired. They see the man. The disciples ask what was a natural question at that time. They ask Jesus, who's responsible for this man's condition? In other words, is it his fault or his parents? Who is it that sinned that caused this to happen? And Jesus responds with just five words, neither he nor his parents. Essentially what Jesus is saying is in God's realm, this man and his parents are not some uh, cursed bunch. They're not on some cursed side of a holy ledger. They are counted as blessed through the eyes of their creator. The world and the powers that be are ones that have closed the gate to these ones and, and labeled them unclean, cursed, unworthy. And what does Jesus do? He, he opens the gates to them and counts them among God's beloved. The rest of the story is where we witness the worst of humanity. We're familiar with these responses. There's no celebration to speak of. The religious elite don't congratulate him on his newfound sight or his status in God's realm. They search for loopholes to, to keep him on the outside. They gather evidence to convict Jesus, a man who doesn't play by the rules. And the great irony of this passage is that the ones who are blind are the ones who are actually able to see, and the ones who have sight are the ones who are truly blind when it comes to faith. Jesus invites us through this passage to ask ourselves each and every day, through each and every encounter, am I the one without sight? Is my vision impaired? That prayer should always follow that internal dialogue that we have within our world and encounters day by day. God, God, may you open my eyes that I might see. I love what St. Catherine of Siena once said that relates to this. She said, The force that created unimaginable splendors and the unimaginable horrors has taken refuge in us. Both those things. And it will follow our commands. Power in the hands of the weak creates suffering and divides men. Those who have held beauty work to overcome their prejudice and seek to bring all into her arms, for nothing makes more sense than being there with him. The miracle of this story is, is how it shows us the expanding nature of God's realm and our place in that circle of love. Perhaps my favorite detail in the story involves the mud. What does Jesus do? What does he use when he heals this man? Not just his hands, but in that very moment when he begins that, he reaches down, takes mud, rubs it on the man's eyes, and uses that to heal him. 
not only does this speak of the the blessed nature of of God's creation, the thing that we're often trying to transcend, but it speaks of God's love for soil, the things of the earth. Jesus doesn't say, "Uh, hold that thought, Uh, we need to get some special oil from the temple, or I have some special mud from from Egypt, but it's going to cost you. Do you have medical insurance? What's your copay? No, Jesus reaches down and takes what is available to everyone, that everyone has access to. We all have the access to that which is holy and that can, which can lead to healing. Holy ground is not limited to a few key places within the world. It's to be found everywhere. Let's go back to the story of my grandfather. I think the blessing of my grandfather was not his home remedy wasn't the turpentine. It was the way that he showed his care and love for me. In fact, at our home church when I was growing up, uh, my grandfather was the one uh, who each and every Sunday, though his name was not in the bulletin, was there greeting every person, welcoming them into church that morning. I'm sure my grandfather, even in the midst of this crisis here, would show so much love that he'd adapt to that handshake that he was used to give to maybe putting his hands over his heart and doing everything possible to share that love, to share that welcome in a way that touched people without even touching those people. A love that he came to know through Jesus and the way that he showed it demonstrated the kind of discipleship that we should all appreciate and love. Through Jesus, we get a glimpse of love this day. And it's going to take people like him, people like my grandfather, to to guide us as a community of faith through the coming weeks and months. Uh, Disciples, people who don't need any instructions, just go out and do that work. My grandfather wasn't an official part of the ministry of our church, wasn't on staff, but he recognized the need of doing his part to help remind people of the presence of God. And that's what we're called to do as people of faith. Remind them of the presence of God. Remind them of the blessed nature of creation, that which they are a part. Remind them that they are loved through simple things like like mud, like turpentine, like messages of love and signs of peace. The way of Jesus is an alternative to the one that we see portrayed by the religious elites of his time. Their way was too consumed with the imperfections of creation, the imperfections of humanity. All they could see is through the the judgmental eyes that they felt were the eyes of God, but were not. God's healing mud is not something that eludes us. You don't have to pay a televangelist $49.95 to get your hands on it. It's not like finding toilet paper in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. It is available everywhere, available in abundance. And so may we let it provide clear vision for us as we attempt to see the world through the eyes of love both today and in the days ahead. Though we can't touch one another, may you reach out to one another in love this day and in the days ahead. Amen. God of love, Hear the cry of those who yearn for your healing presence this day. Fractured families, lonely souls, those in hospital, those in isolation. God of healing, hear our prayer. God of justice, Hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, the persecuted and oppressed, those who are exploited, ill-treated, broken. God of justice, hear our prayer. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace, in battle zones and broken states, those next to border walls, those who are frightened, fearful, anxious. God of peace, 
hear our prayer. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, those who are hurting, weakened, depressed. God of healing, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, most especially, O oh God. We lift up prayers for those anxious times. Be with health care providers and first responders. Be with the leaders here in Canada and abroad. Be with those who are unemployed and underemployed. Guide us through these uncertain times. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray that we may know your peace, your justice, and your love this day and all days. Amen.
thank you for worshiping here with us today. If you missed last week's uh, worship, um, please go back. Um, I had a message in there about my return from medical leave and would love you to, to hear that. It's toward the end of the service. I give thanks for all those who contributed to putting this service uh, together. Uh, your work to help make this happen uh, is important and we look forward to expanding that, that circle as we share in the gift of God's love and as we connect with one another. But friends, as you go forth this day, as you stay in your homes this day, may the blessing of God be with you. May God's healing mud cover you this day and may you feel God's love sharing those words of favor with you this day. Go now in the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Thank you.